So you want the world's largest SUV. Well, today on Geeks 4x4, I'm gonna show you the things to look for when you are buying a Ford Excursion. And um, I would say a used Ford Excursion, but I think that's implied because they haven't built them since 2005. So uh, anyway, we are gonna talk about what you should look for when you are buying your Excursion today. Uh, we are gonna talk about common rust spots. We are gonna talk about things you just, look, you know, little things to look out for. So uh, anyway, let's get right to that video. I'm gonna put you guys on the handheld thing and uh, we are gonna walk around this thing and I'm gonna show you guys some key things that you can look out for. So we are gonna leave aside some of the key big arguments that we always talk about on the excursion pages. Um, we are gonna not really talk about motors. Uh, we're not gonna talk about that. If you're buying a used car, you need to, you know, do your research on the motor. You need to do that kind of thing. Um, I will say, Ask the owner to not start it a lot of times, especially when you're buying a vehicle like this, you wanna keep it for a long time. And so you're not just, you want you want to know what the motor starts like cold, like cold sitting overnight cold, especially if you're buying a diesel, 110% diesel. Um, but same with a V10, same with a V8, um, you want to do that. So um, let's get to walking around the truck when you first get there. All right, so first things first, you're gonna walk up to the truck, you're going to notice one thing that I notice all the time, um, the front grill, this is an excursion specific grill. Okay. Um, if this grill has lines, bars in it and stuff like that, your 2005s and 2004s, I believe have that original, that same F-250 grill, but to 2003, that is the original excursion grill. So if that's not on there, they've put something different on there. Um, you're going to want to look into that a little bit deeper because you want to make sure that this wasn't in an accident as to why that grill was changed. So the next thing you are going to notice um, uh, on this truck and most of them, I believe that all of the block heaters for every motor are right here. Um, you're going to know if that has been used or not. If it's been used or not, it's probably out here. Um, a lot of times they... Um, you know, it has it, first of all, you know that, and then it's been used, um, if it's been used, they, they, they made it to where you can use it again. Um, coming around the side, uh, obviously, you know, wheels and tires, that deal. Um, start looking for oil stuff. So you can tell, uh, I just did that steering box pretty recently still, and there is some, uh, residue left over from the oil on the steering box. And also my uh, inner diff seal is leaking, so it's kind of throwing some fluid around in here. So you can see that just by looking into the wheel well. This is a factory step. Um, if the step is on there, that is good um, because that means that the rockers are not so far rusted that the step is gone. So that is the next thing we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at steps. We're gonna keep walking around. We're gonna, we have rust in our mind. Um, but you know, keep kind of just taking your ballpark of the outside of the truck, uh, original rear bumper, uh, original receiver. That's what all of those things look like. Um, most of them you're going to see that have this chipped off. This truck has lived, I don't know, 16 of its 22 years or 17 of its 22 years in the garage. And it still has the chipping of that. Um, and so you're just, you know, you're kind of taking a big overview of this. Um, you can tell that is not a stock exhaust. Just take in the truck, look at it, um, you know, kind of just see what you got and you're starting to work with here. So let's hop up to the roof. This is your first common spot of um, significance. So this is an Oxford white Ford paint job that uh, has been in the garage for a lot of its life and still has issues. So things like this on the roof are not that big a deal um, what you want to make sure is there's not any rust bubbles along this top edge of the windshield um, these windshield frames do tend to rust out obviously i need to get this stuff fixed and if you buy one with this stuff on there you should fix it um, but uh, this is the stuff you really want to make sure you want to make sure there's no rust bubbles on the top of the windshield so you can see this is paint chip bubbles here uh, I can chip this out of the way and you could do the same thing. And you can see there is no rust underneath that. It is, was just a bubble. So anyway, uh, you want to check on that front and rear. Um, there's definitely, I can show you guys, there's a crack right here that does the same type of thing. Um, and so you've got some, some things on the roof to be looking for. Um, like I said, this is probably one of the ones that's been in the garage the longest of its life and it still has issues as far as the white ones go. Seems like the blue 
my v10 one uh honestly the roof is in better shape <laughs> so anyway all right so now we are going to start looking inside and um the entrance to inside you've got the door jams and the door jams are what we are looking for rust in okay you want to run your hands all the way along these and if you feel any bumps in them that are not there's a couple of pinch welds right there that are normal and if you feel any, the bottom is really where you're going to feel it. If there's any bumps or anything like that in there, it's probably rust starting. There's another little pinch weld down in this corner that you can tell is sharp. Rust is going to be a smooth bubble. Um, I can show you guys on the other rockers in just a second. But essentially, look at all the rockers, front and rear. Um, you know, you can tap on it. It'll make different noises if it's rusted out. Um, these are obviously not rusted out. Um, and that is your big key to rust. The other thing is the, the steps have these metal rails and the metal rails under the steps will rust out too. I'm gonna show you guys both of those things on what I've taken off the other excursion. Let me go walk over there. Okay, okay, we are now over in my scrap pile. So I apologize for the mess, but these are the rails that are on the bottom of the steps. So when you crawl underneath the truck, you're gonna see these, obviously rusted out. Uh, this is a decent looking rocker, um, obviously off the truck. If you run my hands right in here, I can feel a little bit of bumpage and stuff like that. So, okay, kind of interesting. You can see some rust in here. And then you look inside of this thing and look at that. There's rust in this place. So you really can't, you know, just trying to show you guys where you can crawl around one of these trucks and look in and out of it. Um, you can super tell on some of these, these things. So, um, you know, this is the bottom of this. You can definitely tell. Um, now that I've bent it and stuff like that, but you know, that's the kind of stuff you're looking for. Looking for little pieces like this, like that. You know that there's going to be rust started in these rockers. And uh, yeah, you don't want that. Well, if you find rust, uh, now that I showed you guys what to look for and stuff like that, uh, you can go check out, or if you want to know how to stop it on your other trucks, you can go check out the video. I'm going to put a link up here um, of, that I made of how to stop the rust. Uh, there's also guys saying run fluid film inside of them. Um, they're not sealed or anything, so you can just pump that kind of stuff in them. You can also wash them out really, pretty regularly, um, stuff like that, and just keep them dry. So anyway, back to the video. Okay, as we go inside, we're going to notice some things. Um, these lights, factory lights, would not have been LED, okay? So you know that somebody's messed with something if you've got different color than the halogens. Obviously, mine has been messed with. Um, all the stuff on mine's little little sneaky details um this is all factory this switch right here is not factory there was nothing here factory so uh if you see something there you know something's been added somebody's messed with the wiring these gauges again not factory again um that same with this side of the steering column nothing there and uh stuff like that that is also not factory um that's an xm box mount and then you can see where I put my Hydra down right in there. Brake controller, again, not factory. Uh, these trucks did not come with one back uh, in this time period. So uh, this steering wheel, not factory as well. Um, you can get this replacement it's on car ID. Uh, it would have been a full leather steering wheel in these trucks. Start to wear and get black. Mine did about 200,000 miles or so um, the way I was driving it. And uh, so I, I replaced the steering wheel. Um, so if the mileage you don't know about and the steering wheel is pretty black, you know it's up close to 200,000 miles. So anyway, um, into the interior, um, we know that these are some really comfortable seats. Um, the Limiteds came with this. Um, and they're 20, I don't know, this one is in particular is 23 years old or 22 and uh, starting to get a little bit of tears in them. Got to get that figured out on mine personally. But, you know, just look at those kind of things. Uh, look at the carpet. Does it have mats? The other thing is, does it have the factory mats? So uh, those are the factory Ford mats underneath. They actually they had an option for a rubber mat too. Um, and it's a mat that looks very similar to that, but has Ford emblems. So that's a good find. I wore mine out years ago. Um, and same in the rear, there is a factory carpet mat underneath the rear or in the rear as well so um you know check these seats out it's got a handle here it also has a handle here same on the other side 
now that we are inside and such, um, what I like to do is make sure some things work. So uh, go ahead and start the truck. And if you haven't started it yet, you're gonna do all your cold start procedures and you know listening to all that and stuff like that. But start this up and uh, you're gonna notice that the overdrive light is off. It should be off. You should be able to push the end and turn it on. Uh, if it is on, there is something going on with the transmission. Uh, the lights here, their main positions are also in the off position. So you turn the PA off, which is the rear beepers. Um, there is a speaker in the back that you can make go quiet when you're hooking up to a trailer or something like that. And if that light is on, that means that there's a problem with one of those sensors. So make sure that that light is not on. This is the rear defroster and the mirrors, and you'll be able to see that it has a light. Um, if it works, I mean, you could go touch the mirrors and touch the rear uh, defroster if you'd like. Um, but yeah, other than that, obviously, um, check out your full AC unit on your O2s and up that have the digital. Uh, the gem module goes bad and sometimes the windows don't work. The AC doesn't work and the radio won't turn on. So if those three things are not working, you've got a gem module issue. Um, and that's not, not an extremely pricey repair, but it means that the windshield's been leaking. And so you need to probably get a windshield and a gem module and uh, you know just, just some repairs that you know you're gonna need. Um, this also is very common to not work. Uh, there is a couple resistors in it that go bad. It's a pretty easy fix. Um, if it uh, doesn't work, but so that's not a big deal. You know, check out these doors. Sometimes they're broken. Uh, definitely something you want to know about. And uh, yeah, just things like that. Make sure the power windows work because that uh, you know that that rules out your gem module and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, just check some things. Make sure some things work. Well, excuse my mess. I've been working out of the truck and hauling wood and stuff like that. Um, you want to check that your spare tire exists. Um, this is it's not that big a deal, but the little thing that holds it up to the side is hard to find. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, that's what it is. Uh, it's kind of hard to find. Um, there's actually even a cargo net in here that came with these trucks factory in mind. Um, so if you've had the cargo net, I'm curious how many have them. Uh, over here in this little box, this is where your jack is stored. Um, I use it for trailer hitches and stuff like that. So little tip if you are buying one, but make sure that your factory jack is tucked in there as well. As we go underneath, you're gonna wanna look for a couple things. Um, you're gonna wanna look at the trailer hitch. So uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that this thing is not super rusted. The bottom of it um, looks okay. Mine's starting to uh, not look great, but it's all surface rust, um, what I have. Uh, nothing's really deep on this um and uh that diff cover is not factory that's a 08 plus ford one and it just bolts on but uh you know check that check the diff cover make sure the diff's not leaking and uh, check your u-bolts stuff like that seems that people buy some vehicles recently with broken u-bolts so um definitely uh check all those type of things uh you know how's your steering components and such like that um just you know normal check for leaks all right as we pop the hood here i think the um you know like i said i'm really not going to get into the motor thing you guys should be doing the research on your specific motor um and uh you know learning what you can learn about that i think i wanted to show under here is these this is the original jack tools and uh lug nut wrench and just you know just so you know where they're supposed to be and uh what they are so Anyway, well, there you have it. There is my big, really, uh, you know, detailed walk around slash check all these things very thoroughly when you're buying a truck. Um, like I said, the motor is going to be up to you. Um, bring a mechanic friend, make something like that. I just, I can't, I'm, I'm not a mechanic per se. I know, you know, I know enough to get myself in trouble as you guys have found with videos. And, uh, but I just, I just, you know, like I said, my thing when I pull up with something on the motor, I want to make sure it's cold. I check the oil, I check the transmission fluid, I check all the fluids, I roll underneath it, see if it's leaking like a sieve. Like, 
just those type of things. Um, see what it sounds like. Bring my OBD2 scanner, like just things like that. But I, I just, specific things for motor. I think a mechanic, an excursion mechanic should come on here and make another video to piggyback with this video for the engine things that you should look for when you're buying an excursion. Uh, if you wanna do that, I would love to link that uh, video from this one. Uh, so let me know. But anyway, this is, in my mind, one of the greatest vehicles ever built. Um, there are, obviously, I wanted to show you guys what factory art things were there and what things uh, might have been added and stuff like that. I also wanted to show you where to look for rust and what to look for as far as hard to find parts and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, good luck with your searching. Uh, I really hope that you are able to find one and I really hope that uh, I can help you maintain it and keep it going on this channel. And uh, if you're uh, interested in that and more maintenance and more tips like that, if you did hit that subscribe button, uh, that would be awesome. And uh, yeah, we just thank you guys for watching us today. We will see you next time. If you think that I missed anything in this video, big or small, feel free to comment down below. I love uh, uh, some extra tips and extra things like that. And uh, if somebody's looking, they can read the comments and see some more things to look for. So thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm.